Wheat Jack, Life Jack, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in the mountains of Venus, approaching a cabin where three criminals are hiding. They're walking toward a metal bridge across a deep chasm. I wonder if they've seen us, Commander. They may have. This way, they won't have as much warning as if they've landed our ship near the cabin. All right, quickly, across the bridge. Oh, wow, this is a deep bridge. At least 300 feet. Commander, the bridge is giving way. Run for the other side. My feet are slipping. I'm going to fall. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Scavenger of Space. Hi, gang. Captain Dick Tufel reporting. And Captain Jack Nars reporting. We're going to tell you all about those wonderful new Space Patrol space binoculars. We're going to tell you how to get them, how to use them, what they look like, what they do, the fun you can have with them, the thrills you can have with them. Space Patrol space binoculars. Gang, you can see way, way off in the distance with them. People, houses, and cars, blocks and blocks away look nearer, bigger, clearer. You'll wear them on your head just like outer space headgear. They stick out from your eyes a full three and a half inches. Makes you look like a strange person from another planet. Wear them when you're watching sports. And when you play space patrol. Spot airplanes in the sky. Spot your dad coming home from work while he's still way, way down the block. Have fun with them no matter where you go. One end magnifies. Makes faraway objects look close. The other end does a switcheroo. Makes close objects look far away. Not flimsy celluloid goggles or a mask, but real solid plastic binoculars with a beautiful leather-like trimming. Giant size, too. Five inches wide, five inches long. The greatest value ever offered on Space Patrol. But we can only offer it for a limited time. Now, to get a pair, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol. Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. In Lowell City, on the planet Mars, is the head office of Carlisle McRae, president of a very profitable interplanetary business, the business of reclaiming and repossessing metals and chemicals. At this moment, he's sitting at his desk, looking over reports from his branch superintendents on the various planets. The door of his office opens, and a young man enters. Immediately, Carlisle McRae's frown turns to a deep scowl. Larry, what are you doing here? Ah, my big business brother, Carlisle. <laughs> How's the old junk man? Don't use that expression to me. Why, Carlisle, everybody calls you the junk man. That is, except those who call you the scavenger of space. It's a term of respect for your great business ability. Get out of the office. Ah, I'll take it easy. Well, I'll show you something. Have a look at this. That's just a list of your debts. Oh, that's unkind. No, brother, it's an itemized catalog of intended purchases. Materials which the United Planets government will be buying from private firms during the coming year. Huh? Classified information. You stole it. Of course. Well, if you don't want it, I'll take it back. Wait a minute. You deliberately took these secret papers out of the pot. Now you will be in it again. Oh, no, I won't. Fool, you're an employee. When they find out it's missing, you'll be the first one they'll suspect. And then I'll be ruined. Brother of a thief. Well, i Why don't you shut up for a change and just listen? In the first place, I didn't take them out of the file. And no one will suspect me because I went on leave of absence from the commission office three days before the papers were taken. Then how did you get them? I'm trying to tell you. The head of my department's an incompetent character named Donald Hall. Yes? He can't keep up with his work during office hours, and he, he doesn't want the higher-ups to find out. So he's been taking some of his work home over the night. And you hijacked him one night and took the paper. Yeah, you catch on quick. Did you know you did it? No. If it ever gets out that my brother's a crook, I'll never get another government contract. It can't get out. Hall himself won't let it. How do you mean? That's the see. It's against security regulations to take secret documents out of the building. Now, Donald Hall isn't going to admit he violated regulations, so he'll cover up the theft somehow to protect himself. Hmm. 
You know, Larry, perhaps I've misjudged you. Thanks, Charlie. Now, if you uh, think this information can be of use to you. Of use? Oh, why, well, we can clean up. Now, I suppose you'll be needing a little money. Sit down and let's work out a deal. Donald Hall's office is over there, Happy. Oh, thank you, Commander. United Planet Purchasing Commission. Mr. Hall seemed very upset about something, but he wouldn't tell me what it was over the phone. Mr. Hall? Commander Coy, something awful has happened. Oh, uh, can I speak to you? It's all right, this is Cadet Happy. How do you do, Mr. Hall? Uh, fine, fine. Uh, Commander, I want to show you something. Will you come this way, please? All right, come on, Happy. Uh, the filing cabinet. Uh, this morning, I opened this one to get some documents and found this. It's sort of a spooky coat. Exactly. What is it? This drawer is supposed to contain classified information. Somebody has apparently poured acid in here and converted all those papers to this foggy, indistinguishable mess. Who has access to this file? Uh, why, uh, all of the employees in my section. Eighteen to be exact, uh, including myself. Well, why would anyone do a thing like this? Well, it's obviously sabotage. A deliberate destruction of these documents. Perhaps. We'll find out quick with a brainograph. Uh, a brainograph? Yes, I'll put all of your employees through a brainograph test. If they know anything about this, it'll show up. Are they available for a test? Why, yes, yes. Uh, except one. He's away on a leave of absence. He's been gone for several days. We'll test him anyway. If he's innocent, he hasn't anything to worry about. Who is he? Larry McRae. I believe he went to Mars. Lowell City, to be exact. We'll look him up. All right, now if you'll show me an index of those destroyed documents and a list of your employees. All right, Larry. Here's an advance on the money we agreed on. Thanks, Carlisle. Now listen, don't spend it. Don't do anything to arouse suspicion. When the leave is over, go back to Terran, your job with the purchasing commission. Understand? Sure, sure. Look, I'll pick up a couple of things in the next room. Be right back. Now, don't worry about a thing. Gray, go ahead. Mr. Gray, you don't know me, and please don't ask any questions. I have some vital information concerning your brother, Larry. My brother? Yes, oh, sir. Let's have it. Uh, he used to be questioned about some documents which were destroyed in the office where he worked on Terra. Documents? What documents? Please, no questions. Just listen. I happen to know that the Space Patrol is putting all employees of the purchasing section to a brain of rat test. Why do you think my brother would be concerned? Just who is he? Uh, naturally, Mr. McRae, I don't suspect your brother of any wrongdoing. This is just a friendly tip. For all I know, he may welcome a brain of rat test. I have no doubt that he will. Well, in that case, he can get a free trip back to Terra. Come into Corey is coming to get him. Right away. Uh, goodbye, Mr. McRae. Who is that? I don't know. But you're in a jam. Corey is coming here to give you a brain of test. Huh? I can't face that. The, the whole thing had come out. I've got a place on Venus where you'll be safe. You can take one of my ships. I'll blast off right away. Wait, you need some more money. It's in a safe at the chemical lab near the spaceport. I'll give you the address and the combination to the safe. Take the diagonal ramp at the next corner, Happy. It's the surface car cutoff lane to Sector C of Lowell City. Right, Commander. And Carlisle McRae's company's on Avenue R? That's correct. Well, if Larry McRae is involved in this sabotage, he wouldn't have gone right to his brother's place of business. Well, maybe not. At least he hasn't made it difficult for our Martian agents to locate him. But Larry may have some subconscious knowledge of subversive activity in the purchasing section. The brainograph will reveal it. Well, we certainly didn't get anything from the other employees. Space Patrol Unit Headquarters, Lowell City, Mars, calling Commander Corey and Surface Guard 294. This is Commander Corey. Go ahead. Agent L-47 has just reported that Larry McRae has left his brother's office and is headed down Lowell Freeway toward the spaceport. Do you have McRae's vehicle number? Yes, Commander. LP-145H92. Uh, I've just been handed a new report. McRae's surface car has taken lane 7 on the Civic Center, Cloverly. That would take him west of the spaceport. Dispatcher, inform Agent L-47 that I'll follow through personally on McRae. Relieve all other agents from McRae case until further notice. Hurry out. Turn out the ramp to next cutoff, Happy, and it'll take us into lane 7 south of the Cloverleaf. I've sighted Larry McRae's surface car, Hap, through the space binoculars. It's the blue one, a quarter of a mile ahead of us. 
Oh. Oh, yeah, the one turning off the main lane? Yes. It leads to an industrial plant of some kind, a very small one. Our friend Larry McCray could be running an errand for his brother. Okay, Happy. Follow him into the plant yard. Let's go, Happy. I just went inside the building. Yes, sir. Well, this plant doesn't seem to be in operation, Commander. One of Carlisle McCray's properties, all right. McCray Synthetic, the sign says. Well, I thought he was chiefly in the junk business. Only in a very general sense. Well, he's not in this room. He's gone through toward the rear of the building. Are you Larry McCray? Uh, yes. I'm Commander Corey. What do you want with me? Mr. McCray, a file drawer full of documents has been destroyed at the purchasing commission offices back on Terra. I, uh, I don't know anything about it, Commander. Your department head, Mr. Hall, told us you'd left Terra before the sabotage occurred, but we'd like to give you a brainograph test. What for? Uh, if you don't think I had anything to do with it. All the other employees have taken the test. There's a possibility that subconsciously you might have a slight clue that would point to the guilty party. Uh, what if I refuse to take the test? If you're innocent, why should you refuse? But in a case of this kind, I'm afraid you don't have any choice, okay? Oh, yes, I do. Commander, he's got a rage. I'll take that gun, McCray. You need some help, Commander? No, oh, thanks, Happy. <clears throat> oh, what a spot, Commander. I'd say Larry McCray had a lot more to do with those destroyed documents than Hall thought. Yeah, I remember what you said in Hall's office about the sabotage being used to cover up a thing. Looks like you sure were on the right vector with that one, sir. Keep an eye on him, Happy. I'm going to phone Space Patrol headquarters here in the city and arrange for them to take Larry back to Terra right away. I'll watch him, sir. Oh, oh. Yeah. You'll be okay, Larry. Uh, you can get up if you want to, but don't try anything. Now look, get this straight. I didn't destroy any documents. Yeah? Then you were a chump for pulling that gun on the commander. You sure look guilty now. I'm being framed. Donald Hall is, is trying to put the blame on me to cover up for his own mistake. That's it. That noise? Who else is in this building? Nobody. Sounded like a door. Who's there? It's me. Oh. All right, Les. Go out the other door. Who Quick are thing. you? Where, where's the mask? It would be inconvenient if I were recognized. Well, I know my brother sent you. Yes. All I got a tip that the space patrol was on its way here. Get ready to run when I break this bottle. What is it? A very powerful gas. A few whips of this and the cadet will be taken care of for good. Mm. Hurry up, he's coming to Stand back. Come on, Larry. Let's go. <coughs> Commander, I... We'll be back with Space Patrol in just a moment. Here's a secret Buzz Corey wants you to know about. The secret of how space patrollers get a rip roaring start in the morning. Here's what they do. They eat a breakfast that supercharges them. A power breakfast with one of the three checkerboard super cereals, rice checks, sweet checks, and instant Ralston. Checks, they are the super cereals with that modern bite-sized design. The cereals with a swell new taste that you'll like right off the reel. Now, to warm up your motor, there's Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal. Has a heart of wheat flavor you'll really go for. So now you know how space patrollers get that rip-roaring morning start. Gang, get a flying start yourself every morning. Sit down to a nourishing breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal and get supercharged. Rice checks, wheat checks, and good hot Ralston. They're the super cereals that help to supercharge you. Larry McRae, an employee of the United Planets Purchasing Commission, 
has waylaid his office manager and stolen some secret documents. The minor executive, Donald Hall, has not reported the theft, but has told Commander Corey an entire drawer full of documents has been destroyed by acid. When Buzz Corey and Cadet Happy stopped Larry McRae for routine questioning, he resisted arrest and was knocked out by the commander. But while Happy was guarding Larry, a mysterious masked man attacked the cadet and after bursting a bottle of poisonous chemicals, helped Larry McRae escape. Right now, Happy is lying on the floor, nearly overcome by the deadly fumes. Commander. <coughs> okay, Happy, bring McRae up. Happy! <coughs> Commander, don't try to talk now. Wait till we hit the fresh air. <coughs> What happened in there? How did Larry get away? Somebody shot me. I think he was wearing a mask. And that gas started burning my lungs. Somebody must have been tipped off that we were after Larry McRae. I think I can stand up now. Good. We'll broadcast an alarm to Larry. Then we'll have a talk with his brother's car. I don't know who you are, but thanks for the help. Just keep driving. And don't look around toward the back seat. I'm keeping my head down so no one will see this mask. Hey, did my brother give you any new instructions about what I'm supposed to do? I, uh, what did he tell you before? To take one of his spaceships to a place on Venus, the Zarkran Mountains. You know, the hunting lodge near Lake Nazar. Oh, yes. You go ahead and do that, just as your brother said. Oh, fine. I'm sure lucky you rescued Mason Corey. The brainograph test would show right off that I slugged Hall in his apartment and stole the documents. You? Slugged Donald Hall? Didn't Carlisle tell you that part? Hey, maybe I'm speaking out of turn. I thought you knew. Uh, yes, I know. I know the whole thing. Larry dug down the side street and into an alley. I'm getting out. I get it. You don't want anybody to see you when you remove that mask. Sure. Can't take any chances. You. I want you to return a favor I just did you and your brother. Uh, what do you mean? I just rescued Larry McRae from Commander Corey and the cadet. You aren't referring to a phone call tip-off by any chance? Something else, too. Larry was under arrest when I interfered. Uh, and what favor do you want? The documents Larry stole from a certain Donald Hall. Are you crazy? Why, those are worth a fortune to me. They're worth more to me. My good reputation. I don't get it. Just who are you? I am Donald Hall. What? Then this yarn you told the space patrol about a lot of documents being destroyed. Yes, it was just merely to cover up the loss of papers your brother took from me. I had no idea he was the guilty party until a few minutes ago. Now, Hall, I'm sure we can work out a deal together. Give me those documents. You wouldn't use that gun, Hall. I didn't hesitate to get rid of a space patrol cadet. Why would I hesitate to eliminate a character like you? Now get the papers. All right, Hall. They're locked in this cabinet. No tricky stuff, you know. No, don't worry. Hurry. I, I haven't much time. They're right in here. By the way, my brother must have been surprised when you appeared to rescue him. He didn't know who it was. I wore a mask. A mask? Yes, this one. Uh, not taking any chances, are you? The papers, if you please. Uh, sure. Yeah, here they are. Thanks. Uh, uh, these are the ones, all right. Are you reading a little strip? I warn you. <laughs> Try to add parts to the radio. Now I'm going to win it and really take care of it. Who's there? The space patrol. Oh, come in. The train. Commander Corey. This is Cadet Hacker. Yes, Commander. Oh, look at his head. What happened? Uh, uh, nothing. Just the fall, but very clumsy. Seems to be a lot of clumsy in it lately. You didn't get that many dizzy from one fall. Who did it? As I tell you, I fell. I get dizzy spells. All right, I'll get you away. We came here to find out where your brother was headed after he left that chemical plant of yours near the spaceport. My brother? I, I haven't the slightest idea. Did he come back here? I told you, I, I don't know. Commander, look at this. I found it on the floor. Oh, man. Do you wear this at work, Carlisle? It's a dust rag. A dust rag with eye holes. Hand it here, Captain. Yes, sir. It has a 
strange, pungent odor, very powerful and unpleasant smell in there. Ooh, that's the same smell as that chemical back there where I got plugged. Exactly. Carlisle, either you rescued your brother or the man who did came here afterward and dropped that mask. Probably in a fight with you. I don't know anything about uh, the mask, I mean. All right, Carl. If you don't want to press charges against the man who attacked you, it's your affair. Come on, Happy. Yes, sir. Sorry to have bothered you, Mr. McClay. Goodbye, Corey. Man, does it make no sense to think you arrest him? I could, on suspicion. Did you notice that open file cabinet with the papers disarranged? Yes, sir. Whoever dropped that mask could have come to Carlisle's office and right? Papers. Probably the papers Larry stole. Mm, and by the looks of Carlisle, the other guy got him. I think I know who that other guy might be. Huh? Who? When I was talking to Lowell City State Patrol, I learned that Donald Hall is here on Mars. Oh? Yes, it seems he came to consult a certain doctor. Well, what's our next move, sir? Well, for one thing, we'll just keep an eye on Carlisle and pray. If he makes a move, we'll follow him. Any reports since I've been out of the office, Happy? Not on Carlisle McRae, sir. He's still at his office, according to the last report from our agent five minutes ago. McRae's patrol calling Commander Corey. Corey here, go ahead. Carlisle McRae is preparing to leave Mars, Commander. Our agent of the spaceport reports that McRae's private cruiser is being given a free flight check by his chief engineer. We'll blast off ahead of him and pick him up after he leaves Mars. Corey out. Let's get to our ship, Happy. Pick him up, sir. Let him get on his vector. Then we'll trail him. He's setting his ship down about a mile from Lake Nazra. Carlisle sure picked a good hideout for his brother. If we hadn't trailed him here, we never could have found him. There are two other ships down there, near what looks like a mountain lodge. Two ships? Yes. There's a deep gorge near the lodge with a bridge across it. We'll set our ship down the other side of that hill and sneak up on them across the bridge. Just a minute, Carlisle. Come in. I recognize the ship. Hey, what's wrong? Plenty. What's that other ship doing out there? Oh, that. Uh, I've got a guess. Donald Hall. Oh, of course, sir. Came to my office, got the documents, and knocked me out. Where is he? Tied up in the back room. He came here to be sure I'd never be able to expose him in a brainograph test. But um, I managed to get the first blow. And he's got to get rid of Hall. He's as dangerous to us as you are to him. I suggest... Larry, look out the window. Huh? Two space patrolmen. Like, that's Corey and the cadet. They were smarter than I gave him credit for. What are we going to do? Now, don't get panicky. They're still on the other side of the board. The bridge control. Drop the bridge so they can't get across. Now, let me handle it. Wait just a few seconds more. I wonder if they've seen us, Commander. They may have. But this way, they won't have as much warning as if they'd landed the ship near the lodge. All right, quickly, across the bridge. Oh, the sure a deep gorge. At least 300 feet. Commander, the bridge is giving way. Run for the other side. My feet are slipping. I'm going to fall. I've got you, Happy. Grab the railing. Hang on tight. Oh, I... I sure I'd lose my grip. you lucky you grabbed them. Both for both of them. The bridge is hanging straight down. Climb up the railing, hand over hand. Use the braces as a ladder. All right, sir. We're about ten feet from the top. Well, that takes care of them. Yeah. They'll never survive that 300-foot drop to the bottom of the gorge. Neither will Donald Hall. Oh, is that what you're going to do with him? Yes. There isn't time for anything more fancy. Let's get him. Okay. I'll have to get you a new hiding place. Ah, oh, the McCray brother. Corey! That's right. You're both under arrest. We'll see about that. Happy take care of Larry. Yes, sir. Try this for size, Larry. And now, Carl, let's see how tough you really are. Oh, oh, oh. That's enough, Corey. I've had enough. Okay. We got Donald Hall here? Yes. This is in the back room. You see it? I'll do it, sir. Uh, he's here all right, sir. All tied up. Commander, you've got to listen to me. 
I didn't steal any documents. Honest, I merely took them home to catch up. You could have kept yourself out of a worse jam by telling me that at first. Now, there are quite a few counts against you, including freeing of an official prisoner and an attack on the cadet of the space patrol. Hey, you know, Commander, as a cadet, I can say that this is probably the only time I ever heard of anybody getting into trouble by doing too much homework. Ah! <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's thrilling Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. But first, gang, this is Captain Dick Tufeld. And Captain Jack Nard. And we're going to tell you once again how to get a pair of those wonderful new Space Patrol space binoculars that you can see way off in the distance with. A pair of space binoculars exactly like Commander Corey uses. Now, you don't hold them in your hand. You wear them on your head like outer space headgear. You'll look like a boy or girl from Mars because... Space binoculars stand out from your eyes a full three and one half inches. Yes, sir, space binoculars are not just little goggles made out of flimsy celluloid. And they're not just a little mask made out of cardboard. Space binoculars are big, full-size, four-power binoculars. Five inches wide, five inches long. Made out of solid black plastic with a bright red leather-like trimming. Remember, they make objects blocks and blocks away look clearer and closer. Four times closer. You can watch airplanes in the sky. Study birds in the trees. Watch squirrels at close range. Watch your dad coming home from work. And do hundreds and hundreds of other things with them all year long. Absolutely the greatest value ever offered on Space Patrol. But we can only offer it for a limited time. Now here's how to get a pair. Buy a box of instant Ralston. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol. Box 686. St. Louis, Missouri. Gang, if you don't think your binoculars are tops, return them and we'll return your money. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Two criminals are holding Tonga in the sub cellar of a Venus skyscraper. As Buzz and Happy advance toward the men, they pass a large ventilating tunnel covered with a metal screen. One of the men throws a switch, and behind the screen, the blades of a giant fan start to whirl. He turned the ventilator fan on, rushed him, Happy. I can't stay on my feet. Keep away from the grating. I can't move. The air blast pulled me against the grating. Got me, too. Try to pull loose, Happy. The wind's too strong. Commander, the grating is sliding out. Pull, Happy. Pull hard. If you don't get out of this tunnel, you'll be pulled into the fan. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Top Secret D-Ray, when we check, rice check, and Good Hot Wilson again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Bela Kovac. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Check, Rice Check, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol program on your local ABC TV station. Consult your newspaper.